All right, so here's our first one. I already have everything labeled. L to P is 12, L to N is 27, and then the area of LSP is 32. So I have a small triangle where I know this side is 12, and then I have a big triangle where I know this side is 27. And this time, we're going to compare our side, so our side ratio, to our area ratio. And I'm going to put the units on, just so you can see the difference here. So for this side, we have 12 to 27. And it's just one unit to one unit. But over here on our areas, our small area is 32, but this is square units because it's area, right? So our new area is also going to be square units. So right now our units are not equal. Wow. So we have to make them equal. So we have to square both of these, okay, to get those equal. So when we square the units, we also have to square the number. So I'm going to have 12 squared, which is 144, and then my units are squared over. I don't know what 27 squared is. 27 squared, 729, and now I also have units squared, 32 over x. Okay, so now I don't need the units part anymore because now they're equal. So now we're going to cross multiply. So I have 144 times x equals 32 times 729. And we're going to solve. So 32 times 729 divided by... How do we divide by? 144 on both sides. is 162. And remember, we now have everything in square units. So that one. Okay, let's look here. So F to I is 7, I to H is 12. We want to calculate this length of G to I. So maybe you notice we have three triangles here. On the right, we have a right triangle. This is also a right triangle because these two angles around I add to 180. And then up here, we have a right triangle. So I'm going to redraw these two that are kind of facing each other. So here's my right angle. That's I. And then bigger triangle and I'm going to turn it sideways with that right angle being I. Alright. So notice that these both go to G on both triangles and from I to G is X. But they're kind of flip-flops. So the G's here, I to G, that side is X, and then over here it's I to G, and that side's X, right? And then our last one, I have F, and then to H. And those sides are 7 and, not that one, it's I to H, 12. Sorry, I wrote on the wrong spot. So when we do our side ratios, we have X to 12 equals 7 to x. Okay, so even though x is the same line on both triangles, it corresponds to different sides. For our left triangle, it's the long side. For this triangle that I have laying down, if you turn it, it's actually the shorter side. So those do not align on the same side for both triangles. That's big. Okay, ratio set up. X times X. 
and then 12 times 7. So x times x is x squared. 12 times 7 is 84. And then to get rid of an x squared, you do the opposite. And the opposite of a square is called a square root. So we're going to square root both sides. And we're just left with x. And then the square root of 84 is 9.17 rounded. So we do this bottom one. Okay, so let's do it another one like this. So e to g is what we're trying to calculate. So again, we're trying to find that middle one. a is 4, b is 13. So this is just like the one we just did. We have, because these two angles add to 180, this is also a 90 degree angle. So I have the short triangle, or the small triangle over here on the left. And then I have this big triangle over here where both the right angle is G. Okay, so my little triangle, this is actually my long leg that goes up to E, and that is X. But then on my bigger triangle, this is the shorter leg that goes out to E, and that's X. And then our other sides that make up the right angle, so here to here to the right angle, is 4. See how it meets at the right angle? And this side meets at the right angle, and that is 13. So let's do the same thing. X goes to 13 as 4 goes to X. So we set up our ratios, now we're going to cross multiply, so I have x times x equals 13 times 4, x times x is x squared, 13 times 4 is 52, and then to get rid of a square, we take the square root on both sides. So x equals square root of 52, which is 7.211. There we go. So we have a couple that are like this. Um, it's three triangles in one, and we need to find two similar triangles. So calculate G to F. So now we're trying to find this side. If A is 3, B is 29. So remember, to have similar triangles, we need to use two. So I'm definitely going to use this one because I have two sides, right? So here's my right angle at H, and I need to find X, and I need to find, or that's 29. But the small triangle, like we've been using, that's not going to help because I only know one side of it. You have to know two, or at least need one. So this one's a little different because we're actually going to use the big triangle. Right? So I have that right angle now. The right angle's at G. And I know the hypotenuse, that is the side across from the right angle, is 3 plus 29. So this side is actually 32. And then x is also part of this triangle, right? It's the longer leg. And that is um, x. Okay, so now our sides are aligned. Ratios. Notice how x is usually in a different spot on the triangle, okay? So x goes with 32, x doesn't go with x, and then 29 goes to x. What that does is when we cross multiply, we get x times x, or x squared. If you had x over x, you'd just get 1, and the x's would go away. So over here we have 32 times 29, 
which is my To get rid of the square, we take the square root of both sides. So square root oops, of 928 is 30.463. We're rounding to the nearest hundredth, so it'd just be 30.46. We're just going to do two more of these just because they're a little different. Let's keep practicing. So this one we're trying to find GH. A is 3. B is 27. So we've done this one before. We have the small triangle. And then we have the big triangle. And remember our X's are different. On the small triangle it's the long leg. On the big triangle over here, it's the short leg. And then the other leg is 3, and the long leg here is 27. So x goes to 27, as 3 goes to x. Let's cross multiply, so we have x times x equals 27 times 3. x squared is equal to... One. To get rid of the square, you square root both sides. 81 is a perfect square, meaning that the square root is 9, because 9 times 9 is 81. That's how we get square roots and perfect squares to work together. Let's do one more. So now we're trying to find EG. We haven't done this side before. So A is 4 and B is 24. So this one we're definitely going to use this little triangle, right? Where our short leg is 4 and then our side across from the right angle is X. And now this other triangle that we've been using doesn't work. Because we only know 24. So we're going to use the big triangle big big and we know that this side 4 plus 24 I didn't need to have my eraser on is 28 and here's our right angle on the big big triangle and it's the side across from the right angle that's called the hypotenuse so the hypotenuse is 28 and then the other side we need is the short side right that's X so 4 goes to x, as x goes to 28. Now we'll cross multiply x times x equals 4 times 28. So x squared equals 112. Right? I'm doing mental math. Let's check my work. Okay, now to get rid of a square. Take the square root of both sides. So square root of 112 is 10.58 to the nearest hundredth. 